If you guys didn't check it out, I'll put the link down below in the description. Paul was recently on the Rock Pile before mm. with Drew and Chris. It's an excellent podcast. It's the Drinking Man's podcast, if you've never heard of that. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Paul was um, Paul's their resident salary cap uh, guru. Um, but it's an hour of chaos and fun. It was a lot of fun. I love it. Yeah, I love listening to it. Among some of the things that Paul decided to drop on Drew, which made his head explode. And for some of you on Hashtag Nation, you guys know who Drew is. You guys unfollowed us when he came on the show. <laughs> According to Drew. For the record, he sat here, opened a beer, and said, What's up, bitches? <laughs> in sunglasses at like 8 o'clock in the morning. I picked him up at a golf course. Anyway. Paul had a very, I think I get it right. He did a very unique take. Hashtag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. But the Buffalo Bills should trade as many picks away this year hmm. as no. they should because the word is out on there. Draft class. Mm-hmm. But this is where we're gonna put him under the gun in a second. First of all, that's I think it's an insane idea. Brilliant, but insane. Who if you could think of it are possible targets you would trade out with? And are you what what, what players do you think? Was, do you have any players in mind that you had that you wanted to trade out? Or you, just, you just want to completely take everything off the board for this year for the Buffalo Bills because so many people know what their boards are. Mm. So, I, there's two different ways this can go. One, Buffalo trades all their picks out, right? They keep dropping, dropping back, they get value. A couple reasons for that. One, you don't have great picks this year anyway, right? Because you did well, so you don't have great picks. Yeah. And... Truthfully, your contracts aren't cycling till next year, right? You got yes. Edmund cycles next year. You're another year close to the end of Milano's deal. Your offensive line, Lord knows what they're going to look like next season, right? Um, you know, you, you're another year closer to Gabe Davis's last year on his deal because he's only on a four year. You know, uh, you know Hyden Boyer, another year older. But none of those contracts are going anywhere this, this draft, right? Yeah. So you have the ability to kind of step away from this draft and just get a bunch of assets for next year. And maybe that's the way that they go because people kind of know what direction you're going here, right? Yeah. Or you walk out of that draft with like three picks and you just say, let's go. Let's <laughs> let's go. <laughs> what do you want? Very risky. It's super risky, right? And I don't think you see players move necessarily, but – I think Buffalo, since they don't push the chips into the table with free agency, because Bean is too pragmatic for them. Yes. Right? Like, Bean made a comment the other day. Well, he can't because of the amount of money he's going to have to pay. At Josh Allen. And Allen. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like, the Oliver. <laughs> that, that's what I mean, right? Like, there's a lot of problems here. So what's the most affordable way to build longevity? It's always through the draft. Right? And Bean even said, if there's a player available of free agency that we think is going to better the team, we're going to add him. But <laughs> but he made a comment about making short-sighted decisions. So that tells me when good players become available of free agency, unless they say, I want to come to Buffalo, they are not coming to Buffalo. Right? And you, Buffalo's not exactly a destination for NFL players yet. So I think Bean does that all in the draft because it's where the equity is. Yeah. So either you trade out and you build up all those draft picks for next season when you're really going to need them because players are going to start getting expensive. Or you just trade whatever you got now to get as high up as you can to throw the board off. 
right? But yeah, you, yeah, throw yeah. The, you throw the algorithm off there, right? If yeah. teams are looking at they're like, oh, I think Buffalo will take this. I think, you know, with where the board falls, they're going to take him. And then it's like, oh, Buffalo created up 22 spots. You're like, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Our win. board's wrong, right? Yeah. Because that's how this works is there's values assigned to each of those guys. And let me explain this. Let me explain this. So on a, most NFL teams have their first round done. Right? And Mario, how many players are usually in a team's first round? 15 to 18. Right. That's it, but there's 32 picks. Yes. Right? So it's a real thin amount of players that, uh, you know, teams value as a first round player. Mm -hmm. So once that board starts getting real thin, that's when you see teams aggressively move up. Right? Yes. Because either they don't want to fight the board, they just want to go get the guy that they want, or they know there's no chance in hell that player gets to them. Yes. Right. Okay. So... Unfortunately, when you start looking at the remainder of the rounds, players on the quote-unquote board are signed value, right? So if a team has the inside track on another team's draft board or they think they know what another GM is really thinking, what another GM is going to value, and that GM trades a bunch of assets to jump up way ahead of where you show their value to be, then that tells you that you're wrong about whatever you're doing. Yeah. Right? What do you think is the most likely scenario? Because I don't think Bean will ever add, like, I'll just use Odell Beckham, bad example, but Odell Beckham becomes available. I don't even know if Buffalo picked up the phone. Right? Yeah. Will Bean ever make a move like adding an Odell Beckham type player, player who is, uh, you know, a bit of a problem, Gets now he would. By the team. I think now he would. You think now he would? Three years ago, the, the culture wasn't firmly established. I think you go to the AFC Championship game, you go to the division round and play the way you did throughout the season, I think it's a different story now. I think that culture has been developed in that locker room. You know, I, I look at this a little different, Mark. Okay, well, I'm, I'm just saying, like, to answer your first question, Bean is more likely to bundle a bunch and go up and get his guy. I agree. Yeah. And in doing so, like you said, throws off the rest of the board. However, it, it, it's another first round pick that they're going to have to account for down the line. It's just fine. Okay. Right. Who that guy is will matter. I don't know. You only really do that for premium positions. Mm -hmm. Now, it could be he trades a, he trades his their first. Um, he trades their first, uh, third and a fourth to move up. 10 spots. Right. But we won't know about that because each draft is different and the, uh, the value of a trade up, mm -hmm. okay, because that then the bar is set at a certain point. Right. You know, I think the Dolphins did it the one year where they traded peanuts to move up to like three and Deion Jordan. Right. Hey, oops. Uh, but the point is this each draft is individually different. I like that different. Thing too. I know. <laughs> I like that thing. Each draft is individually different but about how much it would cost to move up because right. then they're like, well, you know, this team's offering me this. This team's offering me this, blah, blah, blah. So is he more likely to load up on the draft picks for next year? I don't think so because I think he foresees that team players will leave the Bills, sign big deals. They already have big deals on the Bills. He's not going to be able to sign any really high-priced free agents, so he gets compensatory picks. Right. So I think he throws everything at the wall now goes up and gets whoever he needs because he knows he's got compensatory picks coming in the next couple of years. That's interesting. Okay, that's interesting. I think, it, I mean, why would you load up on picks if you're going to get two thirds, maybe a fourth compensatory? So, I right. want to I want to go back to the Super Bowl quickly. And I think the Super Bowl is a tale of two cities in respect to a team that was drafted and developed versus a team was that hell. was literally just give me the best players I can get my hands on, no matter the cost. Well, we have to be conscious, though, because Donald and Cup were drafted by him. Sure. Those were the two MVPs. In sure. Each side of the ball. Okay. But you, you got a point. Sure. You got a point. Right. Then they was... traded for a quarterback, right? Now, I think that's what throws it off. But the fact is that yeah. they, uh, you know, they just add talent. That's it. It doesn't matter how they get it. Where They added Michelle. They needed him in the middle of the season. Right, mm -hmm. they 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 lost Cam Akers at the beginning of the season. They need another running back because they just don't seem to believe Daryl Henderson is a good NFL running back. Although, I, I don't right. get that one. Yeah. Right, and so they keep trying to replace Daryl Henderson. That's an interesting idea. That is an interesting idea. But we've already had Freddie Jackson here. Don't worry. 
How many times they tried to replace Freddie? I know. They, replaced, they tried to replace Freddie like five times. It didn't matter. <laughs> Two first round picks. Yeah, they, they sure did. They sure did. <laughs> Can you imagine being Fred Jackson on draft day? It's like it's like the movie draft day. Yeah. You know? You're just sitting there. Really? CJ Spiller. Really? Marshawn Lynch. Yeah. I hate you guys. But the point is, that's what that's what LA did was they were like, listen, we don't want to draft a first round talent and let it develop. We want to trade the first round pick and get the talent we know is developed. Well, and I think there's going to be the you know, the whole uh, you know, well, the Bills could stay at, what are they, 26, 27 on the draft board? 25. 25. Well, the Bills could stay at 25 because, you know, uh, back in 2018, uh, that's when, uh, when did they, what, what pick did they officially use on White? Uh, 27. 27? Yeah. Yeah. Just remember, his number. Oh, uh, yeah. That makes sense. That's right. That's right. That's a good way. That's a great way to remember that. I didn't think about that. But I think when you look at that 2017 draft, it's just different, right? Because Bills were at 10, and they allowed the, they were able to let the board come to them, right? Mm-hmm. They could dictate where they went. At 25 already, you don't get to dictate where you are. You don't, know. You know, and there's nowhere to go if you're at 25. You're either giving up a bunch of equity to move up into the draft, or that is usually where... There's somebody on somebody's board. It's still like you just talked about before. There's a first round talent that is on somebody's board that they want to have the fifth year option on. And they call Buffalo and say, hey, we'll give you, uh, you know, uh, our second this year, our second next year, and a first in 2023. Right. 2024 or something. Like that. I think it's really important to call out that the reason Buffalo moved down in that 2017 draft. I'm going to read you the draft picks. Okay. I think this is interesting, right? Because it, between, people are going to make Between 10 argument. and 27? No, no, no. One through oh. 10. Okay. Because I think people are going to say, well, Buffalo could just get their corner back at 25. They did it before, right? They, they, got, a, they got a great corner, you know, late in the draft. They'll do it again. Yeah. And I, I don't think that's necessarily the case because you made the point earlier. Every draft is its own animal. Right. Yeah. And the reason Buffalo was able to trade down was because, in my opinion, the following. First pick, Miles Garrett, defensive end. Second pick, Mitch Trubisky, quarterback. Third pick, uh, Solomon Thomas, defensive end. Fourth pick, Leonard Fournette, running back. Corey Davis, wide receiver. Jamal Adams, safety. Mike Williams, wide receiver. Christian McCaffrey, running back. John Ross, wide receiver. You get to the Bills pick. There's already well, there's already like three picks in there that were horrible. Horrible. But what do you see? You see wide receiver, defensive end. Teams fill in needs that they think they have. And what don't you hear? Corner. No. The Bills could have got the number one corner off the board. But the fact is, that shouldn't that wasn't the position they probably felt they were going to be in. Right? While they're looking at the board, they're saying, listen, we've got the guys that we're targeting, but why are there no corners gone yet? Lattimore goes at eleven, one pick behind you, right? Because you're you trade you trade out the pick, you drop down, you get Trey White, Kansas City takes Mahomes. And that deal is what it is. People can complain about it. The fact is that there were no corners off the board at that point. So you trade back and you say, we thought that we'd be at second or third corner already. So let's just go. Let's get out of here. Because we can get out of here, get a bunch of assets, and still be able to get the level of player that we're looking for. But in 2022, you're already at 25. That draft is going to shape up however that draft shapes up. Yeah, and you probably can't risk waiting for a corner to fall to you. But, but the, the rub, is, is the rub the fact that it's Frazier McDermott evaluating corners, and that's what we trust them to do? I mean, you got the fourth corner off the board in Trey White. And it is a graveyard of corners that were drafted ahead of him. I'm just saying. Was, Eli was Apple Lat- was there, wasn't was, he? No, no, that was the next year. Oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, it was um, Lattimore. It was Lattimore, and then it was Marlon Humphrey, oh. and a Dory Jackson. I mean, Marlon Humphrey's not there. And uh, Garan Connolly from Oakland. He went to Oakland when he was injured. Oakland. And I loved Connolly. Oakland. I thought Connolly was Oakland one of the best the corners. <laughs> right, but I thought Connolly was one of the best corners coming out of college. I mean, you know. That's what happens with me, right? But no, but the point is this. Go to Washington, I think you're a great corner. But. (laughs)
When we talk about the evaluation of cornerbacks, we happen to trust what Frazier McDermott said. Like, if, if it was, like, a linebacker, and we were talking about a linebacker here, mm-hmm. like, not to say that they can't evaluate li- li- linebackers. They can. Here's my point, is the fact that, okay, they were at 10, they traded back, but now they're at 25, they have no choice. They got to, like, see how the board falls to them. Either they have to be really, really aggressive with some picks. Mm-hmm. Maybe I would not be against them trading a first next year because – of the assets you said they acquired, they have to sign. You got to think in three, four years, are they going to be able to afford that first round pick? That's probably I mean, that's not. That's actually a pretty decent point. Like, that, that's what that's I'm saying is, though, if you, if you trade uh-huh. away a first round pick for first round talent right now, because in three years, you might not be able to afford that pick. Mm-hmm. You know what? The opposite side of this coin, Mar, I think, I think, that's, I think that's a really valid point. The opposite side of the coin that nobody seems to ever talk about is in that draft process, when you lose your assistant GM, your pro player personnel director, right? When you when you lose those players, your draft inherently suffers, yes. right? But that information, that development goes with them. So now you have more teams that think like you than you did before, right? Yeah. And that's really, really dangerous because there are teams that are going to be on the same page as you. They're going to think the same way as you. Or if they don't think the same way as you, they know what you know. They mm-hmm. see what you what you wanted them to see while they were there. And that's dangerous. So when you lose Sean to the Giants, when you lose Dan Morgan to the Titans, these are problems for your draft. Then you go back to Carolina. Uh, oh, Carolina. That's right. Uh, not to the Titans. Oh, Carolina. You're right. Um but these are problems for your draft, and your draft gets weaker and weaker and weaker as you make, as you put out copies of your model to other teams. Yes. And that's something that nobody talks about right now. It's not even the level of player the Bills draft. It's how they identify the level of player that they want to draft. And are they going to continue to bet on the draft and be successful? I don't know. I don't know if you can trust their board, and I don't know if you can trust – the, the cloud information that's out there right now. It probably makes more sense to trade up and then trade out than it does to just trade up altogether, right? I get it, but you bring up a really good point. At some point, you're gonna put so much, you're gonna put so many contracts on the books that are guaranteed salaries, like rookie deals are guaranteed salaries, right? You're gonna put so many guaranteed salaries on the board that are high that it's gonna hurt you. It's gonna hurt you resigning players. I, I'm doing this. If I'm the Bills, I am searching for teams that have first-round talent at the needs that I have. Yep. With two years left on their deal, at least. Okay. And I'm trading them the first-round pick for it because I know for two years I can make a run with that player. Yep. And if not, in two years I'll have that pick back. Okay. Doesn't work out. I'll have that pick back to recycle it. But the point is, look at a need where the Buffalo Bills are. A need, a need position. Look around the NFL for te- players that have two years left on their deal. Bills should trade their first round picks for that to totally throw off the draft. It would, but it's going to be an NFC team. They're not going to give a first round pick to the AFC team. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Unless it's the Jags. Yeah, are you really going to give – who cares if you give one to the Jets? Give one to Miami. Just flush that pick right down the toilet. You know, you're probably making your case for being division – reigning division champs stronger by trading them more draft picks. Trade a first-rounder from Mekhi Becton and Dawkins in the third. I'm sorry. You don't I, want Mekhi Becton. No, I do not approve. I approve any situation that that allows Deion Dawkins to move to guard, except that one. Except Mekhi Becton. Except Mekhi Becton. Tigers can't be choosers. Yeah, they can. Yeah, they can. 